It's 1986, and suddenly we look on our televisions and we see raisins. You couldn't look away. The raisin growers had noticed that their sales were dropping. They're desperately looking for a way to increase the sale of raisins. So they started searching for an advertising solution. And so the California Raisin Advisory Board becomes like the client for this advertising campaign. They look for a way to make them human, personable, to make them appealing to people. They want to give them personalities. And in doing this, they come up with the idea that there should be raisin characters. They approach Will Vinton Productions. He says this is a great idea. He says they came to him with the idea of personified raisins and with the song, I Heard It Through the Grapevine. The song itself is upbeat, very musically danceable, like a pop song, the way Gladys Knight and the Pips presented it. Which is the perfect song for Raisins to sing. Ooh, and so they bring their magic of claymation to the subject and eventually create what we now know to be the California Raisins. Claymation is a form of animation where you use actual figures made out of clay. So this is a very hot new technique in the 1980s that hadn't been used extensively before because it's so difficult to do. They are really expensive to produce. You have to reposition the clay figure and move it slightly so that when you film it, it looks continuous. So it took a day to produce three to four seconds for each figure. I would say most Americans recognize that they were mimicking or using the dance movements that were associated with African-American singing groups in the 1950s and 60s, particularly the Motown look, particularly the movements of the Temptations and the four tops. It's utterly different than the kind of advertising that was used for these sorts of food products at the time. Fresh, sweet, sun-made. I wouldn't dream of using anything less because putting any old raisins into these beauties would mean putting them into these beauties. It's so innovative and so exciting that these celebrities want to be associated with it. They do a version of Michael Jackson where you see the spotlight on the stage and does these dance moves. After the California Raisins emerge and start singing this incredibly popular song, you think, oh, raisins. Raisins are interesting. Raisins are hip. Raisins are cool. Raisins are, let's have more raisins. I thought Motown has entered the American DNA. The California Raisin campaigns become so successful. They have two animated films. They release records. They were nominated for an Emmy. By 1991, they're, they're a huge phenomenon. And the Will Vinton Company gives the Smithsonian National Museum of American History a set of raisins. We have four of the raisin characters and a large amount of merchandise that eventually was developed for the raisins. And then the raisins explode way beyond what anyone thought they could be. And I'm certain that it has to do with the music. If we try and think about how the African American community might have viewed this, there are not any significant protests. What you have is more of what is the appropriate use of music that was created in a very different context, maybe even a rebellious context. What is, the, what is the appropriate use, if any, of that music to sell products? And in the 80s, people are really debating this a lot. 
And especially when you see the films, you see elements of real life. What I would perhaps call a celebration is the notion that the actual social conditions of African American musicians are present. There goes the last bus. So call me a cab. Hey man, you're a cab. <laughs> In this, what is overall a homage to these people. Some things that some might feel are celebrations, others might feel is a kind of cultural appropriation. And those points of view might both be true. The California Raisin commercials show the power of popular music in selling products and indeed in transforming the image of products, which they at least temporarily do for raisins. Sales did increase astronomically, but after an initial burst of a couple of years, they begin to level off. The California raisin producers decide they want to keep more of the profits for themselves and produce fewer of these incredibly expensive claymation little little movies. Today we may still think of raisins as being kind of something you put in your kid's lunchbox. But but for a moment they were really they were really hot and hip.